Hello. Welcome to the training video about the HCV HQS remote video inspection best practices. This video will cover inspections of unit interior rooms, the living room, kitchen, and bathroom. Uh, my name is Jennifer Stoloff, and I will be serving as the host. I'm from Econometrica, and I'm uh, joined by Tom Fian, who is the inspector who will guide you through this training. Hello, Tom. Welcome. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to inspect the living room, kitchen, and bathroom, and guiding the proxy in inspecting these particular areas. Uh, now, what is a unit? The unit is a group of rooms located within the structure, uh, forming a single habitable space with facilities used by the, uh, the resident for uh, living, sleeping, and eating purposes according, according to housing quality standards, HQS. It uh, <clears throat> includes uh, uh, the protocol for inspecting these uh, particular areas, which would be the living room, um, kitchen, bathroom, bedrooms, and other rooms. Um, and sec secondary rooms would be your building exterior, building plumbing and heating, and general health and safety. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, topics that we'll be discussing here is the interior rooms, and we're going to particularly uh, spend time looking at the living room, kitchen, and the bathroom. Learning outcomes will cover the following. The inspectable items in the living room and the RVI protocol to inspect each inspectable item in the living room. Inspectable items in the kitchen and the RVI protocol to inspect each inspectable item in the kitchen and the inspectable items in the bathroom and the RVI protocol to inspect each inspectable item in the bathroom. Living room, what are the items that we'll be looking at in the living room? Well, first of all, we're gonna be discussing is the living room present. Then we're gonna look at the electricity, uh, electrical hazards, security, window conditions, ceiling conditions, wall conditions, floor conditions, and lead-based paint. Um, so, Tom, the um, what does it mean when you say living room present? So do some units just not have a living room? That is correct. Some of them don't. And uh, and then, and if that is the particularly the case, then uh, there's a good chance that that unit might not be uh, might not be accepted as a as an affordable housing unit. OK. And then our, these are all items that you're going to find on the HUD form uh, 52580 or if you have it loaded on your device. That is correct. The, uh, for example, on the electricity is, there's a certain uh, uh, requirement. And then uh, as we look at that requirement, then we have to determine the condition of that requirement. So that leads us into the next slide. And uh, here we'll be discussing the living room script. The inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the living room. And we'll run through them. Um, first one is enter the living room. Close and lock the unit entry door. Step back from the door and point the camera at the closed door. Here again, uh, what the inspector is looking for, is there any daylight showing around the door, which could indicate a bad seal, which could uh, impact the uh, um, security of the door as well as uh, losing heat. Next, moving slowly to your right, point the camera at the walls. <clears throat> Excuse me. Show me with your camera, you operating the windows. Show me with your camera, you operating other entry doors and closet doors. Show me with your camera, you testing the outlets with the two prong tester or the GFCI uh, tester. Here, what you're looking at is an outlet. If it has just has two slots, uh, then you would use your two prong tester. If the outlet has three uh, openings, then you would use the three-prong GFCI tester. Also show me with your camera, you operating light switches and fixtures. In this particular case, what we're looking for is, uh, the inspector is looking for missing uh, outlet covers and missing uh, switch covers. The inspector gives the uh, proximity the following directions in, to inspect the living room continue. 
show me with your camera the ceiling. Show me with your camera the floor. Show me with your camera the living uh, room heat source. That would be, for example, a radiator or a, uh, a, a, a heat register. Show me with your camera any infestation, such as uh, cockroaches. Uh, show me with your camera any garbage and debris. Uh, and then show me with your camera any deteriorated paint. Now, when we're looking at garbage and debris, well, what does uh, HUD require as far as garbage and debris? If someone cannot pick up the garbage and debris within one to two hours, then it's considered a defect. So that's uh, that's why we want you to show us uh, uh, garbage and debris in, in, in the photo if it's present. Um, the next slide is a short video clip that shows the beginning of the inspection. Very good. Okay, now go over to the living room. And starting, you'll be moving to your right, and it looks like you've got a uh, an outlet there. Yes. Would you plug the uh, tester in the outlet for me, please? Whoa, it's getting a little foggy. It's in. Okay, good. All right, now take uh, remove the uh, circuit tester. Okay, now keep moving to your right. I'm sorry, to your left. Okay, there's the, the wall. wall. Good. Okay, that looks good. And it looks like down on the left, there's another outlet. There is another outlet. Okay. Okay. And I will go over there and plug this little thing in. All right. It's in. Okay, good. All right. I see we've got two yellow lights. That's good. I'll go. All right, go ahead and remove that. Okay, keep moving to your left. And oh, there's a window. Okay, so go ahead and operate the window. And if you need to, you can set the camera down or the phone down. I'm cranking it open. Okay, very good. Now it's so open. Go ahead and crank it shut. And lock it. Good. Okay. All right. I'm backing up. Okay. So you're now show me the ceiling. That's good. And the there's floor. There's the ceiling. And there's the floor. Okay, good. The next area that we'll be looking at is the kitchen. Um, and the first question that is on the HUD form uh, or in the HUD approved um, software loaded on your uh, DCD would be, is the kitchen area present? And all, all affordable housing units must have a kitchen area that is present. And then there's an electrical requirement, such as uh, the number of outlets uh, and light fixtures that are required. Also, if there's any electrical hazards, and we also look at security, window conditions, ceiling conditions, wall conditions, uh, floor conditions, lead-based paint issues, uh, stove and or range. We look at the refrigerator, sink, and space for storage, preparation, and food service. Now we're going to look at the, the protocol for, uh, for inspecting the kitchen, and we're going to follow the script. The inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the kitchen area. Enter the kitchen area and slowly moving to your right. Show me with your camera the walls. And as you can see here, we're establishing a certain rhythm as we do the inspection. We're always directing the proxy to move to the right. Show me with your camera, you opening the windows. Now here again, you may have to uh, hold your camera in one, one position to unlock that window and then uh, raise the window. Uh, show me with your camera, you operating and latching and locking entry doors. Show me with your camera, you operating closet doors. Oops. <laughs> show me with your camera, you uh, test the outlets with your GFCI tester or your two-prong two tester. And show me with your camera, you operating the light switches and, um, 
and fixtures. So this here, Tom, this would be, uh, you would mark this as a, I don't know, a deficiency because there's no that, plate here on the outlet, no outlet plate. That, that is correct. That's a missing uh, cover plate on an electrical outlet, and that would be considered a 24-hour life-threatening health and safety because there's a danger of electrocution there. Um, as you know, as, as well as I do, electricity is very unforgiving. So as soon as you make the mistake, you pay for it. So HUD takes the, uh, is very serious about that uh, deficiency. Also, the same thing if you go down to the oh, slide yeah. below that, you yeah. can see we've got a missing cover plate on the, uh, on the, on the switches there. So that's a 24-hour life-threatening health and safety. But this where the closet doors are broken, although to be fair, this does not look like a kitchen closet, but regardless, um, these doors are not functional. Um, that's not a life-threatening deficiency. No, it is not. Okay, uh, continue with the, uh, with the kitchen. The inspector gives the proxy the following directions. Again, inspecting the kitchen, enter the, I think we did that one already. Oh, let's we did this to, one, yes. Yeah. Let's move to the next one. Yeah. Uh, the inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the kitchen area continued. Uh, show me with your camera the ceiling. Um, uh, show me with your camera the floor. Show me with the your camera the heat source. Show me with your camera you operating the cabinet doors and drawers. Show me with your camera the kitchen countertops and show me with your camera any infestation and lastly show me with your camera any deterioration. Now if we look at the slides, the top left hand slide, we can see a ceiling that is uh, damaged. The uh, hole is larger than the size of a sheet of paper and it goes through the next to the next area. So that is a deficiency that would be written up as a um, as a failed item under the housing choice voucher program and would have to be uh, repaired. Uh, moving this also over looks like there's a leak there's a leak here. That's probably why this pan is here. That is correct. There is a <laughs> leak uh, coming down from the bathroom above that. Uh, and this looks like a broken uh, cupboard door. Yes, that is correct. And so uh, the uh, on on the right hand side of the slide, you can see we've got a little mouse there that's sitting <laughs> in the uh, in the kitchen there. That would be considered infestation. So that would be a a a failed item under housing choice voucher. We also have on the uh, the, you can see another picture of a sink there with missing cabinet doors. That would be a deficiency. And over on the right hand side of that, we can see we've got missing floor tile. That would be a deficiency. And then uh, here we have a, uh, this is a photograph of a, uh, of a transformer. And it's got uh, a lot of roach eggs on it. So that would be a, an indication of infestation. And then over on the right-hand side, we've got damage to the uh, countertop next to the sink. So all those would be deficiencies and failed items under a housing choice voucher. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in on, on this so you can see it more clearly. Oh dear, that's very troubling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the transformers, are they, they have a tendency to be warm and the, and the roaches like to be around the, the ah. warm areas. All right, now we're going to continue with the kitchen. The, the inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspecting the kitchen sink area. Uh, slowly move uh, uh, to the kitchen sink and with your camera, show me the sink bowl, basket strainer, and the spray hose. Show me with your camera you operating the cold water faucet. Show me with your camera you operating the garbage disposal and of course, that if one is present, um, show me with your camera, you turning on the hot water faucet and letting steam appear or show me a, a thermometer reading of greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn off the hot water faucet. Show me with your camera, the area under the kitchen sink. Show me with your camera, the bottom of the garbage disposal and what, we want to see that because many times at the base of the garbage disposal, there is a missing strain resistor clamp. And when that is pre when that is missing, then you see exposed electrical wires, would, which would be an eminent health and safety hazard. 
So Tom, yes. Tom, we don't need to have a thermometer. It's enough to show the steam coming off of the water. That's sufficient. That is correct. Okay. So don't worry if you don't get a thermometer as one of your tools. It's not, it's not required. That's correct. Okay, uh, inspecting the uh, dishwasher. Uh, the inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the kitchen dishwasher. Show me with your camera the dishwasher. Open the door and show me with your camera the door gasket. Show me with your camera the dish racks. Show me with your cameras the bottom spray arm and the heating element. Close the door and operate the dishwasher in the short cycle. After the short cycle ends, Open the door and show me with your camera the bottom spray area again. And the reason for that, we want to see that the water drained from the dishwasher. Close the dishwasher door. Now, this may require a little bit of patience because when you operate it in this short cycle, uh, you will probably be directed to inspect other things while the short cycle is running. And then you would be in the okay. remote video inspector would would take you back to the dishwasher once that short cycle is finished. Okay, so we we let it run and then we come back to the kitchen in 20 or 30 minutes or whenever it's finished. That's correct. Okay. Now the inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the kitchen refrigerator and uh, slowly move to the refrigerator and with your camera, show me you opening the freezer compartment. Show me uh, ice in the ice cube tray and the freezer food seal. Open the fresh food compartment and tell me that the compartment is cold to the touch or show me uh, with the thermometer reading at least 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is very similar to what we, we just mentioned with, uh, uh, with the sinks. You don't have to have a thermometer to do the inspection. Um, if items in the refrigerator are cold, uh, that's sufficient enough. And then lastly, with your camera, show me the fresh food seal. What does that mean, fresh food seal? Well, that's the uh, gasket that's uh, on the door. And uh, when you close the door, that uh, keeps the cold air in and the warm air out. And many so it's, times- it's this part of the door. Yes, and as you can see on that, on that slide there at the top, uh, right-hand side of the, of the door there, you've got a little bit of a magnetic seal there, uh, strip that's exposed. Uh, so that would be considered a deteriorated seal. And that would be an item that would be under housing choice voucher. That would be a pass with comment. Now the inspector gives the proxy the following directions to inspect the kitchen range and the range hood exhaust. Now slowly moving to the range, show me with your camera, you turning on all and off all the burners. Now for a gas range, show me with your camera, the lit gas burners, turn off the burners and tell me if you smell gas. Now mention, as I mentioned before, um, natural gas doesn't have any odor, but the utility company puts a chemical in there that is very pungent. So you'll pick up that odor very quickly. Now. For an electric range, show me with your camera, the red hot burner rings low. Turn off the burners. Now open the oven door and show me with your camera, the oven door gasket. Continuing, uh, turn on the bake function and show me with your camera, the gas flames or the red hot electric bake, bake burner glow turn off the bake function. Next, turn on the broiler function and show me with your camera the gas broiler flames or the red hot broiler burner glow. Turn off the boiler func broiler function. Now, the, as far as the uh, HQS inspection goes, we have to see the bake and the broil functions work to determine if the, uh, if the range is, is, a, is, a, is a pass item. And lastly, turn on the range hood exhaust fan and light. Show me with. Oh, sorry. 
I'm sorry, Tom, I muted about you by mistake. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself, I apologize. All righty, we were on the letter C there. Turn on the range hood exhaust fan and light. Show me with your camera, the light is on and let me hear the fan running. Turn off the fan and light. And as you can see on the bottom right hand slide, we have a exhaust fan with a missing grill uh, filter on there. And that would be uh, listed as a deficiency. And it would be a 24 hour life threatening health and safety uh, because you have exposed fan blades now and someone could get, uh, could in get injured. Okay. Now we're going to be looking at the microwave oven. The inspector gives the proxy the following directions: in inspect uh, to inspect the microwave oven if it is uh, if it is uh, substituted for the range. Show me with your camera the microwave oven. Uh, open the door and place a cup of water in the microwave oven. Close the door. With your camera, let me hear the child safety door latch. Turn on the microwave oven for 30, I'm sorry, 60 seconds. Open the door and show me with your camera boiling water in the cup or steam coming off the cup. Close the microwave oven door. This is a short video showing uh, the kitchen inspection, some of which we've already reviewed. All right. Now, now I'm going to go kitchen. Yes. All right. There's lights on. All right. So moving. here's the refrigerator. Okay. Open up the freezer door for me, please. I will. Okay. There's the freezer. Okay. There's the seal around the door. Very good. Okay. Now I'll open up the refrigerator. All right. Is everything cold and in there? What? Is everything cold in the refrigerator? Yes, it's cold. Okay, good. All right. And there's the seal. Now we'll go to the cabinets. Yep. Okay. Looks good. And then, oh, another light socket. Okay. And that one's a GFI. So push that little test button on the top of the tester there. Good. All right. Good. And then I got to reset. That's it. Good. With the red one. That's it. Here's the faucet. Okay. I'm moving the thing to the other side. Okay. Going. Ready. And it looks like there's a spray hose there. Is that true? There is a spray hose. Okay, turn I'll that spray on. that for you. Yep. Okay, that's good. All right. Now put the uh, water back on over the garbage disposal and turn that on for me. Oh, surely. Okay, real good. Now leave the water run and look underneath the sinks. I'm gonna see if there's any leaks under the sink. I gotta get my handy dandy flashlight out. That's good. Do you see any infestation, any uh, cockroaches or any uh, any mice dropping? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. All righty. Now, um, is there a dishwasher? There is a dishwasher. Can I turn the water off? Yes, please. Oops. Here's the dishwasher. Okay. Go ahead and open that up for me. Okay. Voila. All right. Go ahead and close it and turn it on. It's going. Okay, you can shut it off. Oops. That's there we okay. go. Okay. Now here's the microwave. All right. It's opened. Okay. I'm going to put a cup of water in here. All right. Um, it's running. Okay, good. And pick it up. 
that I don't forget that it's in there. All right. Is, it, is the water warm? Um, yeah. Okay. Now go ahead and turn the burners on. Do I have to turn them all on? Please. Okay. And then just lightly, just hold your hand over a little bit. Tell me if they're warm. Warm, 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 and warm. Okay. Go ahead and shut them off. And then turn on the bake function. When I was little, I touched it, my hand all the way on top of it. Mm. Um, okay. There's the oven. Okay. All right. Let me look yeah. at that. Let me look at that oven gasket door. Uh, oh, around the door. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Real good. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. And is it getting warm? Is it getting it's warm? getting warm. Okay. Go ahead and shut it off. And now put the uh, put the broiler function on. Wait a minute, I gotta figure out how to turn the okay. Oops. Okay. Is the broiler function getting warm? Yep. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. Okay, now okay. Now move to your left. Oh, it's my Oh, do you, you want to hear the fan? Yes, please. Very good. Okay. I'm going to turn the light off. Move to my left. There's more cabinets. Okay. Good. The big cabinet. Okay. Here's a window. Is there, a, is there an outlet by the uh, cabinet there? Oh, yes. We almost forgot that outlet. Okay. Oops, hold on, my thing's over here. Okay. Can't get it in. Okay, there it is. It's okay, good. Up. Now click the uh, test button on there for me. It's not a GFI though. Okay, all right, good. All right, thanks. You can go okay. and take that. All right, now go over to the window. And down was open. I think so. Yep. Oops. Hold on. Okay. Nope. I think up is open. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good. Real good. Real good. All right. Go ahead and shut it. <clears throat> Looking good. You're a natural. I'm a natural. Yep. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. Now we've got our. Now, before you do that, uh, go back to the window again. It uh, looks like there's two windows there. Is that right? Oh, there is. Let, move that curtain on the left. Okay. Okay. Does that one not open? Um, let's see. Up. Yep. See? It's open. Okay, good. Very good. <clears throat> okay. okay. So, Tom, this is Jennifer again. So, Tom, that was a simulated inspection, but I noticed you didn't um, get to see the ice cubes in the freezer. Uh, yes, that's one. And I would <laughs> recommend uh, uh, that when the uh, when you're actually doing a, a live remote video inspection that in real life, uh, let's, uh, let's inspect that uh, freezer compartment area. Okay. Um, now let's discuss the inspectable items the inspector is concerned about when inspecting the bathroom. And here are the inspectable items that the inspector will be uh, asking you, asking the proxy to show uh, to show during the remote video inspection. Number one, uh, is the bathroom present? And then the electrical requirements, does it have, have at least one, uh, uh, one outlet? Um, and one more, um, excuse me, has at least one uh, working light fixture. Also um, electrical hazards, 
any exposed wires. Then security, we're looking at window conditions, ceiling conditions, wall conditions, floor conditions, lead-based paint issues, flush toilet in enclosed room in the unit, uh, fixed sink in the unit, and tub or shower, and ventilation. So those are the inspectable items that the inspector is concerned about uh, when inspecting the, uh, the bathroom. Now here are the step-by-step -step instructions on how to inspect the bathroom area. So entering the bathroom, give the, uh, the, the uh, remote video inspector uh, the name of the bathroom, for example, half bath or full bath, and also give the, uh, the inspector the, uh, the location of the bathroom, first floor or second floor. Uh, and then uh, show the inspector, show me, uh, slowly moving to the right, show me with your camera the walls, Show me with your camera the tub wall. Uh, show me with your camera you operating the windows. Uh, show me with your camera you closing, latching, and locking the bathroom door. Show me with your camera you operating the closet doors. Show me with your camera you testing the outlets with the GFCI tester or the two-prong tester. Now, when you're using that GFCI tester, there's a little test button on that. So what you'll do is you'll plug that in and you'll push that test button and you'll show the, ins the, uh, the inspector that the power is shut off to the outlet. And lastly there, show me with your camera, you operating the light switches, fixtures, and the exhaust fan. All right, next. Now the inspector gives the proxy the following directions inspecting the bathroom continued. Show me with your camera the ceiling. Uh, show me with your camera the floor. Step hard on the floor area around the toilet and by the toilet and, and by the tub and show me with your camera any floor movement. Uh, you can see there on the slide there on the, on the right hand side there, we've got a, a seal leak and at the base of the toilet and it's leaking all over the floor. Uh, show me with your camera the heat source. And again, we're looking, in that particular case, we're looking for a heat register in the, in the room or a, um, or a radiator. Show me with your camera any infestation. And we can see there, there's a chair there with uh, significant uh, mouse droppings on the chair. So that would be a sign and evidence of infestation. Show me with your camera any deteriorated paint and that's very, con and we're concerned about that. Anytime there is, uh, the building was built prior to 1978, and if there's a child under the age of six that's residing there or going to reside there, or if there is a, a child that's actually poisoned with lead-based paint. And then lastly, show me with your camera, you operating the call for aid and the length of the court. Now, some, uh, some uh, apartment units have call for aids, and uh, where you pull it and they emerge, and an emergency light or bell goes off. Now these cords have to be extended down to the baseboard and that's what the inspector will be looking for. Uh, the, ins the inspector gives the, the proxy the following directions to inspect the bathroom sink. Slowly moving to the bathroom sink with your camera, show me you operating the sink stopper. Uh, you'll pull up on the rod and the plunger should go down into the base uh, of, of, the, uh, of the sink there. Uh, show me with your camera the bathroom sink countertop. And as you can see on the slide there, we've got one that's severely damaged. That would be considered a, a serious cutting hazard. And that would be a 24-hour life-threatening health and safety. Uh, show me with your camera you opening the cabinet doors and drawers. And then lastly, show me with your camera, you opening the medicine cabinet. Continue in looking at the bathroom, show me with your camera, you operating the cold water faucet. Now this is very similar to what we did in the kitchen. Uh, show me with your camera, you turning on the hot water faucet and letting steam appear or showing me a thermometer reading of greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, you do not need a thermometer to do the inspection. Don't, don't panic if, uh, if the inspector did not give you a thermometer. Um, the inspector would just be basically looking for uh, the steam coming off that hot water. Now turn off the hot water faucet and show me with your camera, 
the area underneath the bathroom sink. And here the inspector is looking for uh, uh, leaking drain pipes and leaking uh, water pipes under the sink. Continuing, now we're going to look at the, uh, the toilet. Uh, slowly move to the toilet and show me with your camera the bowl, tank, lid, and the seat. Lift the seat and show me with your camera you flushing the toilet and let me see the water go down. Um, it's recommended maybe put a piece of toilet paper in there so that the uh, inspector can see uh, the, uh, the, the proper flushing of the, of the bowl. Show me with your camera the area around the toilet. Show me with your camera the water shutoff valve. And with the side of your leg, gently, gently put pressure on the side of the bowl. Show me with your camera any movement of the toilet. Now we're going to look at the tub and shower, okay? Slowly moving to, to the bathroom tub and shower with your camera. Show me you operating the tub drain stopper. Show me with your camera the tub shower hardware. Show me with your camera you operating the cold water faucet. Show me with your camera, you turning on the hot water faucet and letting steam appear, or show me a thermometer reading of 100, greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Show me with your camera, you operating the shower valve and letting water stream out of the shower head. And lastly, now turn off the hot water faucet. Tom, I have yes. a question. Please. If my, my, I have an old uh, tub in my um, living unit and the stopper does not work. The, so we have to use a, you know, a, just a rubber stopper. Is that a deficiency or is it okay to have a rubber stopper instead of the, the built-in one? Well, keep in mind with when it comes to HQS, uh, the, the ratings are pass, pass with comment, fail, and inconclusive. And in that particular case, the, in, the inspector would write that up as a pass with comment. Okay, because we've, we've figured out a solution. That's right. Okay. All right, so this is another video showing um, the simulated inspection of the unit. All right, go ahead out and uh, go into the bathroom now. Here's the bathroom. Okay, now there's a laundry area. Show me the laundry uh, dryer vent. Good, okay, I see the exhaust vent, very good. Okay. All right, and then- and Here's the faucet. Not yet, let me see the wall. Be Let's see, is there a- Oh. Okay, yeah, there, looks like there's an outlet there. Would you plug the- Okay, now push the test button. Good, okay, and then hit the reset button. And that switch there, is that for the fan? Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Maybe a little sucker. Okay. All right, go ahead and turn the, uh, the faucets on. Cold water. Okay. Hot water. Okay. Now shut the... Uh, Shut the cold water faucet off and tell me if the hot water is getting hot. I left my flashlight in the other room. Okay. It's getting hot. Okay, good. All right, let's take a look underneath the sink. Maybe you won't need the flashlight. Let me see if I can see. Oh, I can see. We're real good. Yep. Okay, that's very good. All right, go ahead and shut the cabinet doors. Dry as the desert. Okay. All right. Okay. And then go ahead and flush the toilet. The WC goes the water. Okay. Now, um, on the left side of the toilet, I'm sorry, on the right side of the toilet, step on the floor between the toilet and the and the sink vanity. Now, is the floor soft? No. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. All right, we're good. Show me the before you get to the shower. Show me that complete wall by the uh, what, there. Oh, we okay. All, all the way up. That's good. Okay. 
All right, now we're getting over to the shower area. Here's the shower. All right. And then turn on the, uh, uh, I wanna see the tub faucet work first and then the shower faucet. Okay. Now do the shower. Now do what? The shower valve. Oh, okay. Oops. I don't want to pull it too hard so I don't get the foam wet. Yeah. Okay, that's See, good. I can do that. That's good. Okay. There. Okay. Now keep moving to your left. That's good. Let me uh, look inside the uh, linen closet there. See the ceiling. Okay, looks like we froze a little bit. So, Oops. okay, there we go. We're back on, okay. The floor. Okay, good. Everything's dry. All right. All right. Okay. So go ahead, move now out. Move out of the bed. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, now show me the bathroom ceiling and the bathroom floor. There's the ceiling. Okay. And there's the floor. Good. All righty. Uh, so we're going to stop the video there and uh, move on to the next slide. Now, uh, this slide shows the uh, the possible results of inspecting the uh, the living room, kitchen, and the bathroom. So, using uh, uh, HUD form fifty two five eighty dash A, otherwise known as the long form, or the uh, fifty two five eighty A, the short form, or the data collection device, the remote uh, video inspector will determine the results uh, of as one of the following: uh, pass would be no deficiencies. Pass with comment would be some deficiencies, but uh, none are life-threatening. And then we have the more serious, obviously, is the fail. Uh, life-threatening health and safeties are present. For example, a missing discharge pipe on a water heater temperature pressure relief valve or a, uh, a life-threatening deficiencies uh, uh, are, are present, such as exposed uh, main electrical wires. And then we do run into sometimes inconclusives. For example, appliances are present, but the utilities are, are shut off uh, on the initial inspection. So those would be your possible uh, results of your inspections. Now, the inspector uh, inspection results will be available immediately uh, after the in complete inspection is, uh, is finished. The inspector will send the unit's results, i.e. pass, pass with comment, fail or inconclusive to the proxy via email. If the inspection receives a fail status, the inspector will inform the proxy of what needs to be corrected to receive a pass status. If the proxy wants a same day reinspection, the proxy tells the inspector uh, during the call, the inspector will inform the proxy of available times. If the proxy wants a reinspection at a later date, they must call the public housing authorities HQS office to schedule the reinspection. And lastly, the proxy restores their preferred settings on their phone after the inspection and calls, uh, and the call is completed. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, this is very helpful and very thorough. We appreciate the clear instructions th that you and uh, Coco demonstrated for us. Um, if you wanna turn your camera back on, we'll just say goodbye to the folks. Um, <laughs> and the next stages of this process, uh, there are um, going to be three additional videos demonstrating how to conduct the inspections, the, along with the uh, uh, introductory video that gives just an overview of the whole process and things that you should keep in mind. So the remaining uh, training videos, other than this one, of course, um, one will cover the unit interior, interior rooms. Um, uh, another one will cover electric, plumbing, heating, HVAC, and the exterior. And then there will be the general health and safety video covering 
common areas, elevators, and the site and neighborhood. These will all be available at the, on the HUD Exchange for you to watch at your convenience. And my camera would not allow me to uh, put my <laughs> video back on, so I want to thank everybody and uh, look forward to uh, presenting the other modules. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody.